fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One, two, Let's go, big fella. Dark Tom Roberts, most notorious outlaw in the territory of Texas, had planned his escape well. He waited until the jailer opened his cell door. Then he reached into his pocket and pulled out the sharp-pointed weapon he had hidden there. Give me those keys and your gun. No. Help! Help. Shut up! Roberts pushed the guard's head back, choking off his cries. Then he stepped back and brought the weapon down in a swinging arc. You had it coming to you. Now take your gun. Minutes later, he ran out into the open and headed for the thick brush nearby. A short distance away, his pal Perry Osborne was waiting with a horse for the escaping outlaw. Without a word, the two of them galloped toward the north. Two days later, a train on the new railroad that led to the north and the cattle centers was pulling out of the station. Two men sprinted seemingly from nowhere and leaped onto the moving train. Oh, uh, we made it, Perry. Yeah, boss. You're free. Three years later, Tom Roberts' outlaw had become Tom Ross, prosperous rancher, owner of the Circle R, situated midway between Rain City and Dodd City. He stood with his foreman, Perry Osborne, and looked with pride at his stock. Perry, look at those steers and those horses. I own them, all of them. Yeah, boss. You got them on us, too. Yep. But there's still easier and better ways of getting money, Perry. I heard of a gold shipment that's being made from Rain City tomorrow. It'll be on a freight wagon driven by Jim Walton. Now, here's what I've been planning. The Lone Ranger and Tonto camped for the night in the hills west of Rain City. They paid no attention to the horsemen who sped along the road from Rain City that night. The rider, Perry Osborne, rode westward for five miles until he came to the ranch house of cattleman Thomas Ross. Oh, 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 boy, easy. He dismounted and entered the house where Ross and a group of men were waiting. Hi, boys. Boss, I have the news you want to hear. The gold shipment for the West is being picked up in Rain City at sunup. 
Jim Walton's carrying it with a load of freight he's toting in his four-horse dover wagon. Well, do you know how many shotgun guards there'll be? Yeah, two. One on the driver's seat with Walton, and the other in the rear of the load. Hmm. This will be easier than I figured. Well, boys, you've heard what Perry said. Yeah. We planned this job a long time ago. You know what you're all supposed to do. Red, you ride up at the cave and tell Pedro we'll be out there at sunup. All right, boss. Tell him to have the horses ready. We'll switch mounts as soon as we get there. Then we'll ride to Snake Bend and wait for the wagon to show. That'll take us about an hour from the cave. Walton's freight wagon shouldn't appear until later. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto were awake at dawn, and because there was no urgency, ate a leisurely breakfast at their campfire. As they finished their meal, they looked down on the road below and saw a freight wagon drawn by four horses heading westward. That looks like Jim Walton's outfit. Ah, he make trip west to Dodge City every month now. Jim has done a lot for the west with his express service, small as it is. I haven't seen him in more than a year, Tonto. I could talk with him once more. And we go in the same direction. Maybe we meet him before our day is over. He'll only have a few miles start on us when we get going. We'll probably catch up with him sometime before noon. A mile to the west in the same hills, Tom Ross, Perry Osborne, and the rest of Ross's gang waited behind a clump of bushes. All were mounted on horses of distinctive coloring or markings, with Ross himself astride a vivid grayish-white horse. Suddenly, the lookout who had been watching the road from the east shouted a warning. There she comes! Yeah, sure enough, boss. It's a freight wagon. Yes, I see it. All right, men, tie those bandanas tight around your faces. Uh, we don't want to give ourselves away by having any of them come off. And remember, we don't give Walton and the other hombres a show. That's right. Ready, men? Yep. Sure. Let's start down to the road. Right. Get back. Come on. Get up. Get up. Come on. Get up. Get up. Jim Walton and Tex, his shotgun rider, were relaxed as their wagon made its way around the wide curve called Snake Bend. Get up there! Walton heard the galloping hooves before he saw the horsemen riding down through the underbrush. Here we're going to have company, Tex. Maybe we... Jim, road agents. Pardon the shiny out. Oh, Tex, I'm here. Oh, oh. Good shooting. We got a boat. All right, grab those horses. Oh, 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 oh. It's the rear shotgun guard. My arm. I'm shot. Shoot that guard back there. I got him. That's it, men. You got them all. Now to smile, get that gold shipment over the wagon. Right. Get him back. Come on, yeah. get him. Now, Lou, Lou, you stay in your horse. Let's see that arm. Well, it's not bad, boss. It's just a flesh wound. All right, hold something against it so you don't leave any blood stains around here. Start moving away. We'll catch up with you. All right. Come on. Come on. Tom Ross, his face covered like all the rest, rode to the rear of the wagon. He paid no attention to the shotgun guard who sprawled on the ground wounded. He watched the men remove a small trunk from the wagon and break it open with a chisel carried in their belts. This is it, men. That's some money in there. All right, each of you grab a bag. You take two. Hurry it along, men. The bandits placed the money bags across their saddles and then mounted their horses. Then Tom Ross spoke to them. You know where we're heading? I'll lead the way. Follow me. Get it back. Come on, get it back. All right, get going. I'll ride at the end of the line and keep watch. Get going, fast. Get up, get up, get up. Tom Ross led the bandits back through the brush, heading for the hills once more and riding over grass-covered ground. Perry Osborne, as rear guard, saw the last man disappear from the road, then started to follow. Come on, get it. Come on. Get With the first shotgun guard bracing himself against the seat of the wagon where he had fallen wounded, aimed at the bandit and fired. With one shot hit Perry Osborne in the back. Osborne fell to the ground, dead. The Lone Ranger and Toto, rounding Snake Bend less than an hour later, came upon the freight wagon and the bullet-riddled men. Hold it, hold it, easy, 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 Toto, there's been a hold-up. This man is badly wounded. You must have him. Come, Toto. Oh, two more. It's Jim Walton and Tex Carson. Let me look at them. While the Lone Ranger climbed onto the wagon to examine the express driver and his guard, Toto, studying the hoof prints on the road, walked from the immediate vicinity. It was then near the underbrush away from the road that he saw the prone figure of the dead man, whose face was covered by a bandana. 
The Indian called to the Lone Ranger. Me find man here. Him dead. Got face covered. Let me see. Is he one of the bandits? It look that way. He take bandana off face. Hmm. I don't recognize him. No. Kimasabi, me look at front footprints. Them go through bushes. Don't bother about them now, Tonto. There's a spark of life and all three of those men at the wagon. We'll give them first aid. Ah. Then take them back to Rain City? No, I'd hesitate to move them in their condition. I'll treat them as best I can after we've stopped the flow of blood. And you ride back and get the sheriff. A short time later, after helping in first aid, Toto left the three wounded men in the care of the Lone Ranger. He mounted his horse and started back for Rain City. Easy, stop, easy, fella. Get him up, scout. To notify the sheriff and to bring a doctor. At that moment, Tom Ross and his bandit gang were leading their horses from a stream, the length of which they had been waiting for more than a mile. Now, as their horses made their way onto land, that was all shale and boulders as far as the eye could see. Ross stopped them. All right, take off your bandanas now. That's it. We've hidden our trail well till now. The sun will soon dry up the hoof prints on this rock. By that time, you fellows will have your horses back in hiding at the cave. When you switch back to your own horses at the cave, be sure you... Hey, where's Perry? I said, where's Perry? He doesn't seem to be here, boss. You fool, I can see that. Doesn't anyone know where he is? Hey, boss, I was riding the end of the line. I... Well, I thought Perry was behind me riding the rear guard. There's no sign of him now. Well, I know, and I... Say, I just thought of something. Uh, well, what is it? What did you think of? Just after we rode away from the wagon, I heard a shot behind me. It... Maybe they got Perry. Why, Why didn't you ride back to see? Why didn't you... Yeah, it's too late now. They did shoot him. We'll have to set up our alibi quicker than ever. We'll get to the cave fast. When I change horses, I'll head back for the ranch. You, how you ride up the peak there and keep that spyglass plate on the ranch house. When you see the sheriff or any riders come to the place, you know what to do. Now let's forget about Perry for a while and go. No lawmen are ever going to pin that hole up on us. Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up. Within two hours after riding to Rain City, Toto was back at the scene of the holdup with Sheriff Bill Thurman and his posse and Dr. Jacques Martel. The doctor examined the three wounded men. Then he spoke. By some miracle of heaven, these men have remained alive. Good. Sheriff, when Jim Walton regains consciousness, maybe he'll tell us something definite about the holdup men. Well, maybe. But that's not going to keep my men from trying to follow the trail of the coyotes that did this. I know you're the Lone Ranger, friend. And it's lucky it was you and your pal who happened upon this scene. You recognized the dead bandit, didn't you? Yes. It surprised me. He's Perry Osborne, range foreman for Tom Ross. And who's Tom Ross? Uh, Ross owns a Circle I ranch out along this road a few miles. Oh? He's been there about two years. Runs a good outfit. It can't be all good if one of his men was a road agent. You're right about that. That's why we'll have to go out to the ranch and investigate once we know exactly what happened here. Say, I am. I wonder if you'd stay here with me while I ask Jim Walton a few questions. I'll be glad to. Uh, boys, the masked man and I are going to stay here till we get some facts. Now, you men go with Tonto and try to catch up with the skunks who did this. We'll follow after you once we learn something. Now, get. Now, we go this way. Get him up, scout! Come on, get him! Come Here! Monsieur Sheriff, it has taken less time than I thought. The man Walton is able now to talk a little. Now we shall find out what happened. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. Sheriff Thurman went to Jim Walton, and as the Lone Ranger and Dr. Martell listened, the express driver haltingly told what little he recalled of the holdup. He concluded... And the one thing I recollect is this. All of them were riding horses that, that I could pick out in a field of rainbows. Strawberry roans, dappled grays, and animals like that. The leader was on a big, gray, almost white horse. And the only thing they took was the gold you were carrying to Dodge City, huh? If the trunks busted open and empty, like you say. It is, Jim. They evidently knew what they were after. Well, thanks for telling us all that, Jim. Yeah, shouldn't be hard to identify those crooks by the horses. It sounds as if they were inviting you to think that way, Sheriff. Huh? What do you mean? Most outlaws ride dark horses that can't be identified easily. These men hid their faces... Yet on the other hand, they make themselves stand out by riding horses that witnesses might readily recognize. Well, that's true. But let's ride and join up with the boys. Don't you think it might be a better idea to go directly to the Circle R Ranch and check on Perry Osborne there? Uh, we'll go there. But first, we'll ride hard and tell the boys what kind of animals to watch out for. After all, that's the only thing we know for sure, aside from Perry Osborne being shot. The sheriff and the masked man removed bulky items from the freight wagon and placed them at the side of the road. Someone will pick them up later. Then in the space made available within the wagon, they placed the three wounded men as comfortably as possible. Trailing his horse from the tailgate of the wagon, Dr. Martell turned the vehicle and headed back for Rain City. Easy. Easy. Get up there. Get up there. Then the Lone Ranger and Sheriff Thurman rode in pursuit of Tonto and the posse. They found the posse returning at a spot in the hills about a mile away. Tonto explained the bandits had ridden their horses through a shallow stream and had evidently gone ashore on the opposite bank on the shale-covered badlands that extended there. Some dry hoof prints on stone. Me not able to follow trail there. Too hard. They could have gone in any direction once they uh, got to the other side. And we'd better go direct to the Circle R Ranch and do some checking and questioning. I'll ride with you, Sheriff, but I'll not go to the ranch house. However, I hope you'll let Tonto go with you. Yeah, sure, sure. Hey, you come with us, Tonto. Uh-huh. I'll ride as far as Canyon Trail and wait for you there. Good. Let's ride, boys. Get, get up there. Come on, get up. Come on. Sheriff Thurman and the men with him found Tom Ross alone outside his ranch house. He expressed startled surprise at the news of the holdup and deep concern when he heard that Jim Walton and the two shotgun riders had been shot. But he denied all knowledge of the crime and of the reason that Perry Osborne might have been involved in it. Gosh, to think that Perry turned out to be a bandit. I kind of thought he was going bad, though. That's why I fired him. You fired Perry? I didn't know that. Got rid of him just a couple days ago. Found out he'd been selling off some of my stock. Oh, yeah. As for horses like the ones you talk about, Sheriff, no, gone. I never heard of horses spotted and colored like that on this ranch. As for my boys, well, they're out in the rain. Look, but... here come men on horses now. Oh, well, go. Just we were talking about him. You see, Sheriff, I know horses like the ones you mentioned. Oh, boys! Right here, Prado. This way, boys. When the Circle R cowboys answered the summons, they drove a few calves with them. Calves, they told the sheriff, which they had been driving back from the range since early morning. They said they knew nothing about the holdup and were unable to recall seeing horsemen on animals described by the sheriff. Oh, there you are, sheriff. You see our horses, and you have my boy's stories. Yep. Well, I was hoping that... Well, I don't know what I was hoping. Maybe that you fellas could help me out. I'm sorry we couldn't, sheriff. Uh, You come from Texas, sir? 
What? You talking to me? Ah, me ask questions. Now, Ross, don't get your dander up. This engine's riding with me. Well, I resent him talking like that to me. Well, your information engine? No, I never was in Texas. I came here from California. Been out there for ten years before I came to these parts. Well, me just that. There was no offense, man, Ross. All right, men. Yeah. We'll go on and continue looking. Right, yeah. Yeah. Easy, 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 fella. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Tonto rode with the sheriff and his deputies to Canyon Trail, where the Lone Ranger waited. The sheriff told of his visit to the Circle R and the lack of suspicion of the people there. Only when the sheriff and his men rode into the hills to continue the search on their own, did Tonto tell of the question he asked Tom Ross. Me think me see place someplace in Texas. It seem me see it in way not good. It's getting dark, Tonto. We'll ride to the Circle R and have another look at Tom Ross without his knowing it. Perhaps I'll recognize him. All right, let's start now. Come on, come scout. Come on. The Lone Ranger and Tonto went to the Circle R Ranch and made their way in the first blackness of evening to a window at the rear of the ranch house. There, after a while, they saw Tom Ross. You're right, Tonto. You did see that man's face before. He wears a mustache now, but it doesn't disguise him. He's Dark Tom Roberts, the outlaw. Away from the ranch again, the Lone Ranger spoke at length. Roberts escaped from a Texas prison more than three years ago. There's a price on his head. Me ride to town, tell Sheriff? Yes, Toto. Uh, what me do if me find Sheriff Kimasabi? Bring him back to this spot. I'll either be here waiting or I'll return. What I want to do is give the sheriff something more than suspicions to work on. Get him up, scout! Toto headed for Rain City a few minutes later. And shortly after, outlaw Tom Roberts, assured in his role of Tom Ross, well-to-do rancher, answered the knock on his front door. Oh, good evening, mask man. Hello, Tom Roberts. Step back, huh? Let me come in. Why, you... You're too slow, Ross. Get your hand away from your holster. You see where my gun's aiming? Yes. All right, come in. I'll not stay long. Just want to make sure you're out of the way before I pick up the gold you took this morning. What? What? I don't know what you're talking about. No. I don't suppose you knew what I meant when I called you Roberts instead of Ross, did you? I didn't hear you. I was looking at your gun. My name's... Dark Tom Roberts, I know. That was a nice job you pulled this morning up to a point. You shouldn't have left Perry Osborne to die on the road. Perry? You mean he didn't die at once? <laughs> That's a giveaway right there, Tom. You did leave him. But never mind what I meant. I want to get that gold tonight. Having you out of the way now will make it easier. Turn around. What? I said turn around. I'm going to tie you up and gag you. Knowing you're out of the picture will make my job a cinch. All right, stand back. You're not going to... Slow you... again, Tom. Back you go. And now, out you go. The Lone Ranger's punch knocked out the outlaw. Quickly, the masked man grabbed a lariat from the wall and bound Ross. But not too tightly. Then he placed a gag in Ross's mouth and left him in the middle of the room. The Lone Ranger returned to the place where he had left Tonto earlier and where he could watch the ranch house unobserved. He had been there half an hour when Tonto appeared with Sheriff Thurman and the posse. The sheriff spoke. Hey, what's this Tonto tells me about you thinking Tom Ross is Dark Tom Roberts? Sheriff, it's true. The Lone Ranger told of his meeting with Roberts and how he had knocked out the outlaw and bound him. I made the ropes tight enough to destroy the suspicion I wanted him to escape. But a strong and resourceful man like him will loosen them. If we wait hey, long... Look, Somebody leave door at Grant's house now. Yes, it's Robert. Sure enough. Well, well, now's the no, time. No, wait. To... He's heading for the bunkhouse. I was expecting something like that. You were? Yes, he thinks I may be going to get his gold. That is, if he and his men know where it is. Now, here's my thought or plan. They leave the ranch, we follow them. Say, it looks like you guessed right. Look at them running from the bunkhouse to the corral. <laughs> There they go, galloping away. They're heading for the hills. They're far enough away now for us to follow. Come on, men. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. 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 
Pedro, an outlaw in charge of the cave that hid the stolen gold and the horses used in the holdup, had been with the bandit Lou, the wounded man who had been left behind when the outlaws returned to the Circle R Ranch. Suddenly, there was the sound of men entering the cave. Pedro grabbed his gun and faced the opening. Who is he comes there? Who is he? Pedro! Oh, of course. I do not know who it is at first. Where is he? Did he come here? Did who come here, boss? I don't understand. Where's the money? Is it here? But of course it is here, see? There near the fire. I protect you with my life. You ask who, boss? We did not leave here once you go away today. And that was a trick the masked man pulled on me. What was he up to? Why did he do what he did? I did it so you'd leave me here, Robert. The masked man. Yes, and the sheriff, too. Up with your hands, all of you. No, boys, don't let them in. Surrender. Come on, Sheriff, we surrender. Yes, yeah, a good thing we shot first and saved questions till now. Uh, Sheriff, look back there. Those are the horses Walton described, see? Roan, Dapple, Gray White. Yeah, sure. There are the bags of gold over there by the fire. Men, put handcuffs on these crooks. Right, Sheriff. When that's done, get the money. Sheriff, this case is open and shut from here in. Todd and I are going. We'll leave things to you. But wait, where are you going? You did this for us. It's you who found these men and the evidence and the money. There's a reward. Oh, he's gone outside. Well, I'll be... Well, that's the way he is, I suppose. Uh, Ross or Roberts, let's look at that wound of yours. Yeah, it hurts. But before you bandage it, tell me, who was that mask, hombre? You should have guessed by now. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs>